Wow, qué uh, grupo tan fantástico. Uh, buenas noches uh, y bienvenidos. Uh, mi nombre es Jimmy Mulek uh, y estoy muy contento de estar aquí hoy. Uh, disculpen que no puede um, hacer mi presentación en español. Uh, como aún uh, estoy luchando por recordar uh, el español uh, que aprende uh, en la universidad uh, hace más de 20 años, más o menos. Uh, por, por lo tanto, uh, si les aprecio bien, uh, voy a cambiar ahora al inglés. Okay. All right, so thank you very much. Uh, I wanted to take you guys through just a couple of key things, but first and foremost, I really wanted to thank uh, all of our sponsors, um, our channel partners, and you, the participants in this Unified Communications Day, um, for an outstanding. I'm very excited to be here, privilege and an honor uh, to participate in this event. I've been in Mexico City now uh, three or four times over the course of the last uh, several months, and I'm getting much more knowledgeable about the market. Gracias. And some of the great opportunities that we have in front of us uh, collectively. Um, so what I'd like to do um, is talk a little bit about the day, then I'll get into some specifics on hyperconnectivity, uh, unified communications. I don't want to take a wealth of your time this evening. Uh, I think all the fun festivities will begin once I get off the stage. Um, so with that in mind, um, we, we spent a little bit of time this morning, uh, actually with several enterprise uh, IT leaders, talking about hyperconnectivity uh, from both an analyst perspective as well as a viewpoint from, from Nortel, and uh, using us as an as a enterprise customer and the best practices that we've used to deliver um, hyperconnectivity and unified communications. Um, over the course of the day, we've had a chance to meet with several customers. Many of you had a chance to get in and be involved in several workshops. Uh, so it's been a, really a, a well put together a, a day, well afternoon, and I think we're gonna have um, a good quick discussion and hopefully we'll get some value out of this. And then uh, again, we'll, we'll get going with the, uh, the rest of tonight's festivities. So first and foremost, let's go back to the, uh, the charts, please. All right, hyperconnectivity. I get this question all the time. Uh, so what is it specifically? Well, if you look at this chart, uh, the concept is, is that there are multiple devices, multiple machines out there across the globe. And if there's benefit from connecting it, in the future, it is going to be connected. So anything that can be, and gets benefit from it will be connected in the future. And this is going to place a great burden um, on the enterprise, but it's also placing a huge burden on us as individual workers, as knowledge workers today. Um, ultimately, we get, I mean, over the course of any day, several of us can get more than 100 messages over a multitude of devices. Um, uh, your voicemail, your fixed and, and wireless platform, um, your inbox via email, uh, SMS, instant messages. So the, the volume is heavy, then you go into your business applications environment and you have a, a multitude of integrated inboxes there. If you're doing human resource management, you've got one there. If you're doing financial reporting, you've got it there as well. So you have this, just this volume, this crush of messaging that initially was meant to provide some distinct productivity gains for us as users. Uh, but what I think has occurred is it's difficult to move in and out of those environments seamlessly and it becomes a little bit of a, of a speed bump throughout our day because it's not easy to, to communicate in and out of those environments. So what is Nortel doing specifically to address hyperconnectivity? Uh, the first concept here is actually to deliver something we call true broadband. Um, without true broadband, it's difficult to deliver on the demand side of this chart. So Nortel is investing very heavily in technologies like 4G, um, our long-term evolution, and our WiMAX platforms to give us that scalable, robust access environment from a wireless perspective. Uh, we're also investing heavily in, in provider backbone transport and provider backbone bridges as PBB and PBT. Uh, additionally, we're also uh, spending a good bit of uh, time and investment with our core and long haul solutions uh, in the Metro Ethernet space. So we, we had our first 100 gig trial. We have several customers also using 40 gig as a technology. So what we're creating is this unwired enterprise. And what I mean by true broadband is that 
really the network becomes invisible to you. Um, it's, it's, it doesn't interrupt you. Um, you work seamlessly in and outside of the enterprise, both wired and wireless, and that's what we're trying and we're striving and trying to achieve um, with our investments from an R&D perspective. On the right-hand side of this chart uh, is communications-enabled applications. And what we're trying to do is meet this demand of hyper-connectivity and bring in unified communication solutions. So you guys were attending many of you the workshops today. Um, I won't go through all of the various communications functionality that exists within inside of our UC platforms. However, um, I think it's important to note that what this gives you is an integrated communications environment that allows you, again, to manage all of that communication that I talked about with hyperconnectivity in a very seamless, intuitive way. We're also investing heavily in web services, ultimately to invoke telephony as a web service in the middleware of your business, in your business processes. Uh, we're building an ecosystem of partners and suppliers to allow us to do this and deliver it. Uh, obviously, I think many of you are aware of our relationship with Microsoft and the ICA. Uh, we have a very distinctive one with IBM as well uh, on the Lotus and Same Time products to, again, integrate our rich telephony heritage there, plus a multitude of channel partners that you guys have seen uh, over the course of today as well. So if that's what we're doing, I just want to spend uh, a few more minutes talking about um, unified communications and the vision we have for the enterprise. Um, I discussed some of this with a, a group of about 100, 120 semi folks this morning. But really the vision is to actually transform the enterprise. Much of the work we do today, I think, is, is extraordinarily siloed, segmented. Um, again, it doesn't allow us to move seamlessly in and out of these environments. And actually, it, it creates a lengthier cycle time in our business processes. Um, we use separate vendor systems. Um, again, they're siloed. And it's very, again, start to stop task oriented. Versus it, being, versus it being transformed and creating a nice multi-vendor environment that is unbounded, it's well connected, and actually again provides a singular interface and converges all that communication capability effectively into your desktop via soft client. So I just want to touch on two more slides and then we're going to wrap things up. I'm going to make this nice uh, and short and sweet tonight. Um, so the roadmap that we have for our enterprises is broken up into three very distinct components. The first is to actually converge your network. You've got to move into this IP telephony environment. So you've got to go from TDM to IP, that is the very first stage. And each one of these has real dis distinct value proposition associated with it. But obviously as you move uh, left to right across the slide, you're going to get more and more value out of this as you integrate those communications activities into the processes that drive your business. The second big phase here is to move from IP to session, session initiated protocol, SIP. And SIP is actually what will help you bring UC to life in your enterprise. This is where you start to integrate the IP switch with your UC platform, and you get all that functionality that you guys witnessed today in terms of instant messaging, presence, web collaboration, file sharing, click to call, click to video connect, that type of, of functionality, and again, a very seamless and intuitive environment. This last phase is actually where I find myself at Nortel um, getting ready to embark on taking this, this telephony capability and driving it into our applications environment. Because we're creating a service-oriented architecture which is really allowing us to ultimately expose UC as an application and drive telephony again into the processes that run our business. So let me summarize by saying that, that Unified Communications is here today. It is alive, it's real, and you can do a lot of different things with it. It can actually improve your speed to decision making. It allows you to connect with the right employees at the right time, irrespective of where they are. It actually improves your speed to service. So when you have a customer service issue and you have somebody on the phone, you get the access to the experts that you need via this UC platform to actually address that customer inquiry right then and there at a moment's notice. It actually eliminates human delay as you drive this into your business process environment. So it can drive speed to revenue because you're going to shorten those cycle times for your business. And finally, we've got this, this speed to ROI because what we're proposing is not a proprietary solution. It's very open. Um, it allows you to leverage the sunk investments that you made in your network. And for example, from, from our perspective, as we deliver this over the course of the last four years, I've leveraged my Meridian infrastructure, my old a switched environment. All I did was add some software and a signaling server to turn it into an IP switch and I was able to continue to use those TDM assets on our desktops in terms of the customer premise equipment and the phone sets. 
So again, it allows you to preserve that existing investment. So these are the multi multitude of things you can do with unified communications. Um, I think from, uh, from Nortel's perspective, it's given us uh, a very distinct competitive advantage over the course of the last four years. Maybe not even a competitive advantage, it's actually helped sustain us in a very difficult environment. Um, and it's actually helped us drive down our total cost of ownership. It's actually taken out roughly, um, it's an in-year payback of about $12 million a year to deliver this kind of capability into our network. So again, very substantive. Um.